Hey traders, this is Christian from Hertz Tribeca Trade Group with a weekend video and uh, we're doing something a little bit different in this video. This is going to be a deep dive into energy stocks. So <clears throat> I think it's a good time to do this. This is something that um, I've been talking about in the last couple weeks in the newsletter. I think I've had you know, a couple charts of some energy names in, in just about every weekend newsletter for the last couple weeks. And um, I did this about, a, I would say maybe about a month to six weeks ago where I went into some names, individual names that were starting to get back into uptrends. They got above the 200 day moving average. And uh, those were names like Oxy, those were names like PSX. And um, the ETFs had not yet done it. They were close to doing it, but they had not yet get above, got above the 200 day moving average. So. Now it's a little bit different. We're starting to see the, the energy ETFs get above, the companies get above the 200-day moving average. They kind of slipped a little bit of, uh, a few weeks ago. So they started to move up and they, and they kind of stalled a little bit. But um, energy was very strong last week and um, that kind of propelled the energy, the energy names to get above and the energy ETFs to get above that 200-day moving average. So I think it's an excellent opportunity for a couple reasons to go into to some of these names. Uh, so the first one being is that um, the names that I'm going to go over in this video are all now back above the 200-day moving average. Um, the reason why I'm, I'm looking at just the names that are above the 200-day moving average is because in my trading, I want to own the best performers. I don't want to pick weak stocks um, that are going to struggle. I want the leaders. And those leaders, uh, as you're going to see, are, are showing some nice strength and, and have had have some nice momentum in the last couple of weeks. So again, I want to stick with, you know, for a group that's been out of favor for a while, I want to go into the strongest ones. I don't want to go into the to the weakest ones and and try to kick around, you know, names that have been depressed for a long time, but maybe they move up. I I want the the market leaders, and I generally do that in most other sectors. But this is a little bit different because uh, energy has been the underperformer for the last couple of years. All right, just grabbing a little water. So. If First off, you know, obviously energy stocks are going to be tied to the commodity price. They're going to be tie, tied to oil. So in this case, you want to keep one eye on oil. So this has been, you know, the, uh, what I, and, and I think with any chart and with any, uh, uh, you know, an, analyzing of any chart, we want to go back and we want to look at um, a longer term chart just to see what's going on here. And if you remember way back when, this is 2014, 2015, when oil was around 115, 120, you know, it made a huge slide. And, um, you know, I played a lot of energy names to the short side. But if you look at, you know, where we've been over the last year and a half, it's basically been in a big sideways pattern. So we don't really know how this is going to revolve, resolve itself. We do know that oil is back above the 200 day moving average, but it still has a lot of work to do into, you know, basically getting above 58. However, I think around this level, and I'm not an energy expert, but, you know, I've listened to some of, some of the energy uh, pundits and, 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 and experts, guys who know the industry really well, and, and some of these companies can make money when oil is, um, is, is decently above $50. So that's another reason to kind of look for it, to kind of look through this. We could look at a weekly chart as well. You can see we're above the value area. It looks like we've got some resistance up here, probably around the $60 range. Um, the other reason why I want to go into kind of a deep dive into energy stocks is because in my analysis, what I like to do is kind of be prepared and know what names that where the charts look pretty good so that when we see the option activity, when we see the aggressive call buyers come out, we know what names we're looking for already uh, option activity in, in, in companies. Uh, so we already have a frame of mind. Um, so this will kind of give us a little bit of an intro into where the strength is in inside the the energy sector and this way when we see those call buyers we know that it's that the chart setup already looks pretty good and we've had a lot of su success with either getting into names this year even prior to when we've seen unusual or, or I should say aggressive call act uh, aggressive call activity, which is what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for unusual. I'm looking for aggressive. So some, there's been numerous examples where we've actually gotten into some names this year before we've seen the aggressive call activity. So 
uh, we're beating the game when, when, when we do that. So that's the other reason um, to kind of go, go through. So let me start. So that's enough of that. Um, that's been about five minutes of just, just an intro. But um, so here's the, the crude chart. And then what I'm going to switch over to is, is to Bloomberg a little bit. So I also, I think this is a good opportunity because I know a lot about ETFs and um, to kind of share some of my, all right, so I just had to pause the recording there. There's some fire alarms going off in my building. So if uh, if the recording is a little bit choppy, that's why I'm not going to sit through a fire alarm. So um, you may see, a, you may hear a couple kind of chops here in the recording if that happens again. Okay, so I want to go into a couple of the ETFs. Um, you know, that's really where my knowledge, where I started off as an institutional trader. So I can really kind of share with you how these work and um, the structure of them and the differences. And um, and then we can kind of, uh, then I can share with you how I kind of do a deep dive into some of these sector ETFs. So to start off with, which I'm going to send this out as well to, to members, but um, you know, what I'm looking at basically is the energy ETFs and the companies that have regained their uptrends. Simply, and to make this as simple as possible, just uh, ETFs and companies that have gotten above the 200, their 200 day moving average. Now, in terms of an, an investment aspect, what I often do, and I think is a good place to kind of start, is to use more of a core satellite approach with these sectors. So what does that mean? You may have heard that term before, core satellite. You could, you know, you know, if you look on, in, in, was it, Investopedia, you could see what the definition of it is. Some people will just say, hey, use an index ETF and then pick some single stocks along with it. Rather than just you know, go along the S and P and then look for individual names. I want to use that approach in sectors. So possibly looking at the sector ETF and then picking a couple single names. And I usually do that in a ratio of about, you know, let's say 70 to 30, where I've got 70% of the ETF in my sector port, uh, sector allocation. So let's say, for example, that, you know, my 100% of, of invested world, um, I generally don't like to have more than 15 or 20 percent, um, which I may overweight from time to time, like the semis, which were really hot earlier in the year, which are still hot, excuse me, which are still hot. But I don't quite have as much exposure to the semiconductors um, as I did in months past because I think they're a little bit overbought and, and uh, might be ripe for a little bit of uh, correction. So anyway, so let's just start with, with saying, hey, let's keep your allocation to uh, to a sector, maybe 15 to 20 percent of your overall portfolio. So within that 15 or 20 percent, you know, may, maybe taking that money and saying 70 percent or 60 or 70 percent of that allocation goes into an ETF. The rest goes into single stocks. It's a little bit more of a conservative um, approach ra rather than having equally way uh, rather than just having stocks. Um, so that's an approach I take. Of course, you don't have to do that. You can pick your individual stocks. You can avoid ETFs, or maybe you just want an ETF um, for the sector exposure. How I do it is that core satellite approach. You may do it a little bit differently. So first of all, let's go into a couple of the ETFs. We'll talk about what they are, the, the major ETFs. And I'll start with XOP. You know what? Why don't I start with XLE? That's the one everybody knows. Um, XLE is basically... And um, I think I've got the wrong chart in here. So I'm just going to take this out for the time being. But XLE, and I'll just share with you what XLE is. You know, so this is just energy companies and it's large cap energy. So it's your biggest energy stocks. So uh, it's probably your most conservative way to, to play the sector. Now, it does have companies that produce, develop and produce oil and natural gas, provide drilling and other energy related stocks, but it's market cap weighted. So what does market cap weighted mean? It means your biggest stocks, the stocks with the biggest market capitalization, your outstanding shares times your price are end up being your biggest weights. So of course, if you look at Exxon, you look at Chevron, um, these make up, if you add these two together, make up about 30% of the ETF. So it's really skewed towards those bigger companies. So if you're looking for more of a speculative, more small cap names, XLE is really not the ETF for you. But if you're a little bit more conservative and you just want to play with the, the largest names in the group, then this may be a little bit more fitting for you. All right. So um, if we look at the XLE chart, 
and again, I'm, and I'm looking at mostly like the last couple years just to kind of see where these things have come from and then kind of drilling in. But you can see five year chart, you know, big downtrend and we're now above the price action is above the 200 day moving average. So it did do this um, back here at bottoms back in 2016, got above the 200 day moving average, had a nice run from, let's say, March, April of 2016 to the beginning of 2017 and then around March April we started to slide back here and we've been in this bear channel but we're now out of it so we're now out of it and we're back above the 200 so you know and and going back to why I'm looking at names above the 200 day moving average a it gives us you know it shows us that we're back above um, we're no longer in a downtrend b it gives you a nice level of su of support and a stop level so in trading you know, just a general principle is to hold on to your winners, hold your winners and, and hold for them for big winners, hopefully, and get out of your losers quickly. You only want small losers. So with these right above the 200 day moving average, we really don't have that far to go for a, for a stop. So along here versus XLE, if you got into it, you know, let's say you get into it Monday, I would use that 200 day moving average or, or slightly below it as your stop. Uh, just to go over some of the other ETFs in this space. So that's your large cap. XOP is probably the next one that I would talk about. And your XOP is, I would say, uh, is going to be a little bit faster moving uh, because it's an equally weighted ETF, right? So that means that the small cap names get the same, uh, the same exposure or the same weighting as your large cap names, right? So if we go to MHD which is the holdings, you could see that no name in this ETF is greater than 3%, right? So that, um, that means all these names get exactly the same. There's no skew, basically. You know, Exxon, going back to the XLE example, Chevron and Exxon make up 30%. There's no two companies that are going to do that. So, you, I, so I think Exxon and Chevron are in here, but they're smaller weights. Uh, I don't even know if I can find them in here, but I'm pretty sure that they're in here. Um, but again, it's going to be based on not by the size of the company. Uh, let's see. I don't even see them in here. Oh, there it is. There's Exxon in, is in there too. Chevron should be in here as well. So they're in here. It's just a different weighting scheme. And if you look at XOP versus XLE, you could see that it looks a little bit different. Um, it's got a different, um, you know, a little bit different profile. Again, it's also above the 200-day moving average. And um, then there's two other ETFs to cover. And I'm going to, I wouldn't normally bring this one up, but we just saw some option activity in IEO. So what's the difference between XOP and IEO? First of all, look at the description. It's, it also says oil and gas, just as XOP is, but this is market cap weighted. So it's almost taking the same basket of names, but saying, okay, we'll look at all the names in the oil and gas exploration and production, and then we'll, we'll market cap weight, weighting those. So you can see Conoco, EOG, Phillips, these are actually the biggest weights. Again, it's, it's a little bit more of a skew than XOP is, but it's not quite as bad as XLE. So it's kind of has a little bit of middle ground. And, and again, just names that are oil exploration and in and, and production. So Conoco is the biggest weight in this. Again, EOG is second, PSX is your third. All right, so that's um, that's IEO. Let's take a look at the, the chart in this one. And you can see this one's actually a little bit better performance so far. Uh, you can see the separation, a little bit further separation upwards to the 200 day moving average which is again the the yellow light yellow line on my charts here and i brought this up for you you could see this is a name that never sees um option activity and we have march 69 calls so what's particular about this um they swept this trade so it's an aggressive trade and they're actually going out uh, they're going out to March. So it's not just something that they're looking for, like a quick bounce in, in oil. You know, they're going all the way out to March. So they think this is a, might be a sustained uh, rally. And they went all the way up to 69, which is kind of interesting um, level because that's almost about where the high was going back to 2016. All right, so a couple names to, to look at. Um, you know, so as I mentioned, if we go back to my my notes here and what I put together, 
So these are names. So those are the, those are the ETFs. There's one other ETF that's out there. It's OIH. But if you look, um, and why I'm not going to spend too much time on this, this is the oil services ETF. It's not there yet. It's below the 200-day moving average. Um, I don't really want to deal with it because, um, you know, if, I, I guess if you really wanted to trade it, you could use the 50 and the 100-day moving average as support, but it's still in a downtrend. It's not leading the way higher. So I'd rather avoid that. Um, we did see some call buying in one of those names on Friday. It was SLB, the November 50, uh, 65 calls. Uh, they already reported earnings, but, um, you know, so this would be more of a speculative play. It's way below the 50, the 100, and the 200-day moving average. You know, there is some support here. Maybe somebody's looking for a catch-up play at this point. But um, I, I think there's better opportunities. So you could do this for speculative trade versus shorter-dated, you know, it's a shorter-dated option that they decided to trade. The November 65 calls, which... You know, are, are up here. It's not that expensive of a trade, but you don't have much time because it's only it's front month. So maybe these things get up to resistance if everything else rallies too. All right. So where I want to spend a little bit more time is talking about the names that are in some really good uptrends. Chevron. Uh, Chevron is one of the first energy names that kind of cracked above the 200-day moving average. Um, take a look. It's rallied. It did well on earnings. Um, and, but it's been sitting back down here and back into the 50-day moving average. So not a bad place, I think, for Chevron to maybe try along here in Chevron. And again, I would be waiting for that option activity. Notice it's testing also support on the weekly chart of the top of value. So it looks pretty good to me. This is one of those that I think if I see some, op some aggressive option activity, um, I think on the dip, it makes sense. Um, Exxon is another name, you know, to, to take a look at. It's it's been grinding. It has not been a huge mover um, in terms of, of volatility, but it's just been slowly trending higher above that 200-day moving average. Which again, this is the the white chart on this particular um, on my thinkorswim charts. We can look at this if we want to look a little bit further, and um, we could look at Exxon here. So it doesn't seem to me that it's terribly exciting. Again, maybe wait for, it has made a nice move from basically 76 to 83. Um, I don't see anything against it. You got a nice golden cross, the 50 crossing above the 100 and the 200. Just not terribly uh, exciting to me. Maybe wait for a little bit of call buying. Um, or maybe use, you know, wait until the price catches up with the 50 day moving average, go into it there. Uh, so let me start going through some more names. The one thing I will say before, I, I did forget one thing. So I, on Friday, started a position both in cash um, and in uh, options. I did the January options in XOP. So I am now um, have entered into the space via Friday, and I got long XOP. Why did I choose XOP? Um, we did see some call buying as well in this one. So I mentioned uh, IEO. Uh, we also saw some call buying in, oops, I want XOP. Uh, so you can see November calls going up, a little bit of puts going up as well. If I go a little bit further into XOP, if I could pick the 10 days and look for aggressive trades, uh, you can see we've got a couple things here. You know, really this, I don't think this is much of a worry, nine cents, maybe puts actually being sold. Uh, these are December 35 calls, 7,000 of them. These are these are the 37 calls, December 8th, a different um, a different maturity. But again, these are all sweeps. This is so a lot of calls out in December: 35, 37, 36, 34. Um, so you go down. So there's so again, look at all the activity. Everything that's in the put side seems to be being put, possibly being sold on the going up on the bid side. Um, so a lot of above ask going up. So this has been going on for the last week or so in terms of dates. This was Wednesday. This was Thursday. This was Wednesday. So this is fairly recent. This was Monday. Um, this was 1027. So last Friday. So again, pretty recent stuff. This is Tuesday's order and, and that's a November order. But again, a little bit further out in December, which is kind of what I'm looking for. So 
I'm in that. So talking about in, the, in what I mentioned in the beginning, I've put that core position on in XOP. Now I can start to look for some individual names. And again, I don't think it's much different if you wanted to do those IEO. It's it's very similar. It's just the cap uh, weighting is different. You know, one's cap weighted, one's equally weighted. All right, so let's start with um, with Conoco. So again, what I did was I went actually and I used the IEO ETF and I went through maybe the, the top 20, 25 names and I went through all these different names just to look at the names that are in uptrends. Conoco, the first biggest weight in IEO, um, nice uptrend. Again, the, a lot of these are gonna look very similar across of the uh, above the 200 day moving average and um, the 50 day also, so Golden Cross here. You're gonna see the same thing in EOG. So being that many of these look very similar, PSX was actually one that we detailed about a month ago. This was one of the first um, ones that got above the 200 day moving average and has been one of the strongest ones. So really, really like this chart, nice bounce on the 50 day moving average. So again, call buying in this one. Valero, another one of the, I would say, the most strongest ones here. It looks like I messed up this, uh, uh, the way these are kind of laying out here. Um, MPC, another one um, that has just been in beast mode, you know, quietly just moving up very, very high. Uh, CXO Concho Resources hasn't broken this resistance. I would maybe watch this one right below 150, maybe around 149. Devon Energy. Um, this is more of you know a name that's been in a big downtrend. This one, I you know I, I again I would maybe wait for more call activity. It does seem like it's still in a downtrend, even though it's just above the 200-day moving average. May I I would probably need to wait for a little bit more confirmation in DVN, considering that it's kind of it's gotten above the 200-day moving average a couple times here and failed here. Um, here as well, it spent some time for a while above, but, um, you know, again, as long as you're using that 200 day moving average as your stop, you don't, you're not really risking that much. Marathon, another one that just recently got above the 200 day moving average, 50 day crossing above the hundred, good things. Um, COG is one that I really like and one that we've been seeing call activity. I'll bring this up in the blotter and you could see the activity that we've been seeing. And I just want... Um, sweeps. So just your most aggressive. November, December, January calls. This was your probably your biggest order because these went up for 212. Um, and this went up not uh, last Friday, but the Friday before back on 1027. And I think those have already been working considering the, the time gone by. Um, Fang, this is not the Fang that everybody refers to with technology stocks. This is Diamondback Energy. Another name that's been uh, been trending very nice from 97 to 110. So some of these names, it's been that have been better performers. It's been going on now for for a while. They this is not new. Uh, they've been uh, they've been rallying for a little while. CLL CLR Continental Resources. Uh, I would say another smaller name around 40 bucks. It's just got above the 200-day moving average. Again, looks pretty good versus that. You could see again, 50-day moving average hasn't crossed over the 200, but has crossed already over the 100. Um, and I think that that's it. So we got about a 20-minute uh, video here. So these names that I've detailed here, this deep dive into the energy stocks, looking at the single names. If I think if you want to be patient and wait for the call activity as your confirmation, you know, you 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 can certainly do that. Um, if not, I think you can pick and choose um, and use that 200 day moving average or some of them that have done a little bit better, use that 50 day moving average as your as your support and an area to um, to get out of. But for me, um, I've just started the the uh, positions in, the, in my core positions XOP and now I can kind of sit back and wait a little bit and decide if I want to go into some single names. The single names again will be smaller for me. You know it's for me it's about 60% of my sector allocation is going to be into uh, the ETFs and then I'll use like the 30 or 40% smaller positions going into the single stock names. So if you don't like the the energy ETFs, at least you could use those for proxies to tell you whether or not the group is in an uptrend or a downtrend. And then, of course, watch energy. All right, so that's it for um, for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I think it's always a good 
uh, exercise to go into the whole group. It gives you uh, a good glimpse at what's in there and, and, and what's the strength and what's not. And, um, you know, there's a bunch of other names that I looked at too, but there's no real reason. You know, PXD is one name that we've seen over and over call buying, longer dated call buying. But um, it looks challenged to me. This is a name that just reported earnings. Um, I think it needs to get above 163. If you don't want to wait for that, considering it's 13 bucks, you could basically use the 100 day moving average for PXD. Um, that is one. Uh, I think APC, you know, a couple, a couple names that are just not there yet. Um, they're not doing poorly. I think APA is another one. Um, still challenged. So again, the ones in the report that I went over are just over the 200 day moving average and moving up and up trends. And I would rather uh, stick to the strength. So that's it for now. Uh, we'll be going over those names individually as we see them hit the tape uh, in the trading room as they occur. So um, uh, you'll have to be a member of Tribeca Trade Group to, to watch how I add those positions. All right, guys. Thanks for watching and have a great night.